have you ever flown across several time zones and found when you got there you simply couldn't stay awake? Have you ever woken up before your alarm clock? For how many people is Monday morning the absolutely worst time to have your hard drive crash? If you ask people in my field what I do, they would say, Martha works on the clock on the dish. And what that simply means is that we were the people who really championed the um, discovery that you could take a slice of brain that contained a biological clock that was necessary for timing in the living organism, and you could take it out of the brain and put it in a life support system, and it kept on ticking. The name circadian rhythm means circa dian about a day. And it refers to the fact that if any organism, a plant, an animal, even blue-green algae, are put in an environment with absolutely no timing cues, they will continue to show rhythmicity. That ryth rhythmicity is close to that of the solar cycle, which is exactly 24 hours, but the endogenous timing of organisms is not exactly 24 hours. It's circadian, about a day. For many, many years, we thought there was a clock inside the, the brain or somewhere in more simple organisms, uh, but a locus where there was a clock, and just like we have a clock on the wall, and that was what determined everything you do that varies over the course of the day-night cycle. More recently, we've discovered that every cell is a clock. We can think about the system as a sort of clock orchestra with the clock in the brain being the conductor and all the rest of the parts of the body and the cells therein being the players. It turns out most of us have in our clocks, in the genes that we inherited that control timekeeping, the tendency to run a little bit shorter than 24 hours or a little bit longer than 24 hours. And at this point in time, it's looking like the particular set of clock genes, those genes essential for timekeeping that you get, determine whether your clock is running a little bit shorter. You like to get up a little bit earlier than the normal time, or 24 hours. Um, and then others of us, and I'm one of those, whose clocks run a little bit long, and we'd much rather be active longer than a normal 24-hour period. Our tendency is to stay up a little bit later unless there's a timing cue that pulls us back. The way in which we get synchronized to the environment or sometimes to other stresses in our body is by communication from the environment through the eye to the clock or from other parts of the brain to the clock. And these signals are chemical. Uh, we know a lot about what those chemical signals are. They involve excitatory signals coming in from a special class of cells in the eye that are directly photosensitive that are not the rods and cones that let you see color, shape, and movement, and all the visual things the eyes do. These are the cells that project directly into the brain, and they contain a very ancient photopigment, melanopsin. That signal goes into the brain. If it comes in in the daytime, it's basically saying everything's okay. You're synchronized to day and night. Just keep on what you're doing. If it comes in in the early night, however, so in other words, light, in the early night where you might anticipate it's dark, it triggers the clock to adjust its timing through a neurochemical called glutamate, very strong, excitatory neurochemical. And it delays the clock and sort of says, hey, you reckon night is too early. You need, really need to stretch out daytime a little bit more. This is the way the clock adjusts to the seasonal changes in the world. Research is like going, you know, on a hunt uh, through the forest and you, you, you meet with difficulties and you're trudging along and sort of figuring out new techniques for solving the problems and you go over the hill and you go, aha, we have a new piece of insight and then there's another forest that you get to go through. I'm Martha Gillette and I'm a professor of cell and developmental biology. I was recently elected a Center for Advanced Study professor and I'm also appointed in the College of Medicine.